Hey guys, Teresa here with Sippy Couture. This weather's a little crazy, so I'm gonna hope my spray paint won some um, land on the cup today. We're doing the baseball softball mama both tumbler. And what we're doing is our decal is gonna go over the spots for this one. So we're kind of just taking this black spray paint and get an idea of where we want that decal to go. Um, I have it where it goes. I can see the spots from each side of the tumbler. And I'm just giving myself, like I said, an outline of where I want that to land. I'm trying to get this in between raindrops, I think. All right, so our decal is gonna go right here in the middle, and then we'll be able to see white at the top and yellow at the bottom. That's pretty much perfect because we want it to peek through from each corner. So that's where we have the spots. This is just a rough draft, so we know where to put those spots. We're gonna lay those down once this paint dries, and then we'll come in with the white and yellow spray paint and um, in a few more steps with this. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by saying, please, please excuse the noise. I have, um, all my boys are on spring break right now. I have four of them. Three aren't home, the six-year-old is, and he, I know he's gonna have a million questions. And once my other ones run in, everyone will have questions. So I'm gonna start off by telling you with this design, if you wanna save yourself about a day's worth of work, do the prints, do the leopard spots in vinyl. Do not do them in glitter. I took on this um, challenge when someone gave me a sublimation design they wanted, and I thought it would be really great to do it all in glitter, which it was, and it looks amazing. But, um, I mean, it adds like a day's worth of work onto this. So I, you could easily say that if you decide to do these in vinyl, you could put these on um, just before the baseball stitches. I'll tell you in this video where to start that. And this whole next um, half hour of video, you could skip that if you decide to do this in vinyl. So what I did, if you decide to do it in glitter, this is how I do it. In my brain, this is how I function. So it works easier for me. I already know where I want my stitches to go. I kind of work this idea in my head backwards, knowing that I want my decal to go right here with the paint behind it. I want the stitches to come up on an angle on both sides. So I know where that wants to, you know, I know where I want that to go. So I started with that idea in my head last. And I'm going to position everything based on where my stitches and my colors are going to go. So I kind of worked backwards. I know I had someone asking, um, how I got my stitches to fall so perfectly, um, I planned that. <laughs> that was that was intentional, I did that first. So what I want is when you see the front side of the cup, I want a bigger group, and I'm gonna adjust this. This is just so that I have a background for my spots. I want my white to come up this way a bit more. And I want this to go about right there. So I wanna be able to see that much of white and this much of yellow. And I'm just kind of marking it so that I know where about, about where I want my spots to go. And all we're doing right here is we're laying our spots down. I wanna make sure when you see this from the other side of the cup too, when you see, you'll be able to see a few spots on the top and bottom. So I'm gonna start off by placing those. That way I know where my design is gonna start and end along those edges. And they don't have to be perfect. Um, just get them whoop, down. And I place these by hand just to make sure, like I said, everything is right where I want it. So when I see this side of the cup, I see a print right there and right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and fill in this bottom part. I'm gonna mark right here also, a few of them of where I want that to end. Let's get this one. It's gonna go about right here. And I think, you know what, I might actually bring that line a little more. We can adjust that. This next step, we're gonna be taking spray paint and we're going to be covering this in gold and white spray paint. The reason why I do this part is, um, is so that when I do my black leopard spots, I want them to have a lot of depth to them and giving them a black base will allow for that to happen. So I coat it black, that way I don't have to try to draw in like individual black spots later on. Um, I am not as talented as a lot of other people <laughs> when it comes to just free handing leopard spots. I'd rather them just look perfect on the cup. So we're gonna go ahead and put these in the swirl pattern of how I want it to look. I'm gonna make sure they're um, on the cup, but they're not like completely stuck down um, super, super hard where it's gonna be a nightmare to move. Now for these um, little stencils that I'm using, I use Duck Brand Shelf Liner. 
I like that a lot better than using any type of stencil vinyl. Um, it's cheaper. I use it for everything. I'll line my countertops with it and then just pull my countertops when they get too dirty. Um, I use it as transfer tape. I mean, everything, absolutely everything. So we want to keep putting these on this cup. Some of them I have in like a decent, like I'm following the pattern how it came off the cup and some I'm just placing by hand. Um, that's just because with the curve and how I'm grabbing them off this paper, it isn't any certain way, which is a great thing about this design in leopard spots is that it does not have to be exact and no one knows where that dot was meant to go. So definitely a lot of give with this. Do I have a piece that looks like that? I do right there. I don't right here. So let's go this. The inside of the spots, um, the really round ones, I keep those because every once in a while I feel like I need a little filler piece somewhere. So I will keep that and put it, that goes with this one. I'll put it on the cup. I have one stuck to my hand. Part of me really wishes that I would have done two of these cups the first time. One for my sister-in-law with the, um, everything in glitter and then the other with vinyl spots. I completely didn't even think that part through when I posted it. I was just so excited. And now I'm like, how many of these do I have to make? <laughs> Which is great. It's definitely a good problem to have, but oh man, hindsight. All right, let's see. I wanna circle down here. The pattern that I'm using, it's Fuzzy Leopard. Um, it's an SVG that I found on Etsy. I will link it. There you guys know where to get it. It is by far my favorite leopard. There was one that I was using at the very beginning that I thought was so cute. Now I look back to those original cups and I'm like, ugh, it's the ugliest leopard I've ever seen. All right, so now I'm just kind of filling in spots. My thing that I am careful for is like, I have that long one right there, so I don't want another one too close to it. So I'm gonna skip that one that's on there. Put that somewhere else. It would help if I had a super round one right there. So I'm gonna dig deeper on this sheet and get one. Perfect. And probably an open one right there. So let's go. Thank you guys for all the love saying you don't mind the long tutorials. I was seriously stressing out over that. My husband was like, you are worried more than anyone else is. Like people can fast forward. So for everybody that was like, do not worry about it. We don't mind. Um, I cannot explain. Like I can't put into words how much I appreciate that. Um, it is so hard editing for me. I do custom tumblers. I don't do ready to sell. Everything I do is um, based on an order that I have. And to put a tutorial together, I'm you know, trying to throw this together in between other orders. And it's hard. It's so hard to get done um, to have everything work all perfectly like that. So um, thank you guys for understanding and being open to long tutorials and knowing that you could just fast forward through my um, my words because I don't mind. I think I'm going to start something where if you guys ever want to FaceTime me um, and ask questions, you can. Or if you're stuck on a design or want to vent or just hang out, um, I'm available. I do this full time. I'm always home working on tumblers. Um, it may have to be something where in between work, like we're both working on stuff and we can hang out like that, but I'm available for any questions. Cause I was kind of thinking how I wanted to, um, move forward. Cause I like doing tutorials, but I also want to help. And if there's a way that I can help you guys, that would be cool. So I'm going to come up with a way that you guys can, um, reach out directly to me, get me on my cell phone, um, pretty much whenever you want. I have no idea how I'm going to do that. I know it's probably taking on a lot, but, um, I'm available. And I might as well, um, I like helping, I might as well do that. Okay, 
So I have these dots on. I don't like that one. It's kind of, do I like that one? It might be too big. A slightly smaller one. Okay, let's go right there. Cause that's where I want that color to come up. All right, so I'm gonna look at it and make sure it's how I want it. And I'm gonna stand up for this. I want my white to come across the top and the yellow to come across the bottom so I can see it from both ends. And I want the same thing to happen with the print on the other side. I wanna see it from the bottom and from the top. I'm gonna to go one more dot right here to really push it over. Is this gonna be small? That's kind of small, let's see. Go for a bigger one down my paper. Okay, and for that, I'll touch up with black paint just to get in that section. All right, so there's the leopard spots. I'm happy with that. Anything we don't, um, we think might need something, we can add a dot later on um, just with the black, just with black paint and glitter. So, all right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move outside and we're gonna spray paint this gold and do white and yellow so we know we're dropping our glitter. Like I said, the, um, all this work with the black spots, that's just to give me a base. Um, like I said, if you're doing this in all vinyl, skip this step, guys, half a day. Okay, so I have my spray paint. I'm gonna go first with laying down my white. I have these doll rods that I use whenever I'm spray painting tumblers because I can easily, um, oh goodness, I was out of the shot, wasn't I? Um, <laughs> these rods that I have, I can easily, um, you know, move my cup around and lay this how I want without having to turn my hand in circles. So that's my little hack for that part. Now I'm getting my white on. My main thing is to make sure that white really covers up the black because the yellow, um, this glitters that I'm putting on, they're super bright and I definitely don't want them to get lost in some of those colors. So I'm gonna let this dry a bit. I'm gonna run and hit it with my heat gun. And then I'm gonna come back uh, with another coat if it needs it and some yellow and the gold. Okay, so we need that white and the yellow to stay super bright. So we're gonna do our gold next. And we're putting the gold down, that way the gold glitter will have a base and it won't be over white. This is one of the steps that I do for everything. I base paint my um, cup in the color that the glitter is. That way it gives it more depth and it, um, I really love the way that looks a bit more. Uh, if you don't like doing that, then you don't have to, but this also gives you an outline of where you're laying stuff. So I strongly suggest this step. Okay, so that's where I want my gold to lay. And then now I'll be able to touch up the white and the yellow. For this part, it's okay if the gold goes into, ooh, the wind is coming at me. If the gold goes, if the white goes into the gold, but I wouldn't want it the other way around. Just because I want those colors to stay really bright. I'm gonna have to try turning around. see if it works this way all right so we're going to go with our yellow now I want the yellow on the bottom and I want it to kind of ombre up further you hold your spray paint away from the cup, the better that ombre is going to be. So now I'm just going to, oh, now my wind's going the other way. <laughs> my main thing right here is making sure I have a um, nice clean line of where my colors fall. I feel like that yellow might need to come up just a little more. So I'll see what I can do with this wind fighting me. I'm, gonna, I'm kind of hitting it so that the overspray will do its work. Okay, so I think that makes me happy. So that's where my gold's gonna go and that's the white and yellow. This is your template of where everything's going. 
So this is where we are for right now. We'll let this dry completely and then we'll get epoxy on for this next step. So this has been drying for a little bit. What we're gonna do is put our epoxy on. We're not using a ton of this. Um, I have just whatever's left at the bottom of this bucket after I set a few cups just now. I'm using speed dry. And the thing that I like to, um, the reason why I like using speed dry for this is that it will kind of set in one place. I'm going to put the epoxy on first and then I'll go through and pull up all of my little leopard spots. The reason why I put the epoxy on first and then I pull my leopard spots is so that the leopard spots will stay and I'll know where to drop the black glitter. Um, if I put down this epoxy and then I put down the glitter, um, those leopard spots would be very, very lost and they would be hard to find. So I put the spots down, the um, this epoxy, and then I'll pull up those spots. For this part, you want to make sure that your epoxy gets inside all of these little leopard, um, all of the little crevices. Make sure this has worked around really good. And we're just getting a thin layer on here. It's just enough to hold your glitter in place. It doesn't have to be a ton. That's um, one of the reasons with using whatever's left at the bottom of your bucket is that it helps control how much you're putting on. All right, I'm gonna let some of this go around for a minute. And then this is something that I always like to do. You can see where some of the streaks are from putting that epoxy down. I flatten out my glove and I put my palm pretty flat and I just tap the whole cup. What this does is it creates tiny, tiny ripples in the epoxy where it would help those lines blend in more. If you have big old streaks from where your hand ran through the epoxy, you'll be able to see that in the glitter. It'll cause um, kind of ripples in your glitter. Where if you do this, it will give it almost like a, um, really really small type of um, textured look to it and it will even out on its own it's a lot easier for those tiny ripples to flatten out than big old streaks so i go through really good make sure all that's patted down and there's epoxy in between all of those dots and then we're going to let this roll for a minute Okay, so now this step is going to be to remove these um, the leopard spots. This has been rolling for just a few minutes and it should be enough to get this speed dry to really set in place. So we're gonna turn this off and we're gonna remove these spots. I have a dry baby wipe here. Um, and I know I say this in every video, but just in case I catch someone who hasn't seen my videos before, um, I keep dry baby wipes. So I'll take the pack and I'll throw the whole thing in the dryer and then put them in an empty tissue box. And I'm able to use those for a whole bunch of stuff with tumblers. They um, hold the acetone a lot longer and rubbing alcohol a lot longer. It doesn't evaporate as quick with the baby wipes. And, um, and they're really, really good for wiping off paint or um, alcohol off your tumblers. Okay, so if you can see how it spun for a minute and they don't, I'm able to move away this these spots without it traveling into the black. This is a part that I said that if you decided to do the spots with vinyl instead of glitter, you're saving yourself this whole step. Um, definitely hindsight, I would have made this <laughs> with black vinyl um, just for the sake of saving this, but that's all right. It kind of looks cool with the glitter anyway. So I have my little weeding pen and I'm just gonna carefully take up these spots. If you have a rag kind of soaked with rubbing alcohol, it's really good to take these and kind of put them to the side, wipe your hands off on that rag because it really cleans this um, epoxy off of your hands pretty quick. This is all we're doing. We're gonna go through and remove all these spots. Okay, 
so now that all those spots are off, I'm going to let that spin for a minute, make sure everything's back to level, which like I said, with using that speed dry, it sets up so quick, it's not a problem. Get all this extra epoxy off my hands and any stickers. And now we're gonna go through and drop the glitter for this. All right, so this is a part that is sort of um, tricky with how we're laying all this because I'm gonna do it all at one time. We're gonna get our white down first, then go yellow, then gold. And that's just to make sure that none of the, um, the areas kind of travel too much. What we'll do is we'll take our cup on an angle and we're gonna drop the white so that it kind of slightly falls into that gold part. And I'm going just along that line. I'm gonna take the same thing, I'm gonna drop it about the middle of this and let it fall down. Then I'm gonna take this other end and bring it back up this way. And I'm just following that line. Mark some of that off, then make sure we go down into the white again. I always like to do this white first. That way, um, it's, it's okay if the white sticks to the yellow, but we don't want a bunch of that yellow or the gold coming up to the white. We want that white to stay. So I always put this down uh, first. Mark some of that off, and then make sure I get along that top part. I'm using Garden District for this white. It's super, super pretty. And like I said, let a little of that fall into the gold. Okay, knock that off and then we'll do the same thing with the yellow. Whenever I'm doing my ombres, I make sure that whenever I'm dumping my paint and my glitter that I'm stopping just shy of where I want that center line to be. Since I do some of these ombres on an angle, you have to remember that wherever you think that end point is, it's gonna travel up. So you can kind of anticipate that color to go a bit further than you'd originally like. We're gonna drop this on an angle down this way, get that gold covered. The yellow I'm using is twin span. I'm not sure if I said that. Then we're gonna drop it so that it ombres itself up. I think it's time to order more of this. And I'm gonna go one more time to make sure that I have a fairly even line right there. The more of an angle you tilt your cup, the more the glitter will fall and give you that ombre. And I'm gonna make sure that white This white is falling down in here too. So I'm gonna go one more time just with Garden District and make sure it's falling into that yellow. All right, put that away. All right, now it's just a really easy part of getting this gold on. You can see how this fell, how it's about half and half, and then we'll get this yellow, uh, the gold. The gold I'm using is a custom mix that I put together of a few of my favorite um, NOLA glitters. You can use um, your favorite gold or um, if you want an easy go-to gorgeous gold, gold mine would be my choice if I wouldn't have put this together. So the same thing, I'm kind of holding it, holding my cup on an angle that way. Woo. When I drop that glitter, it will fall into those other colors. 
Make sure it does the same right there. I'm going to do the same thing for this line. Most of the time I just keep my uh, tumblers on the turners when I'm doing ombres. But whenever I'm, you know, really dropping it from the bottom, I want to make sure it goes on good. So I'll pull it off. So it's a little awkward to do it in that, that position. All right, we're going to let this roll for a minute. I'm going to stop it on the other side so I can drop the gold down and I can really get it to fall exactly where I want. You can see how when we pulled those spots, it isn't like they didn't get covered up by epoxy. So they're staying that black that we need it to. That way it's easier to know where these spots are gonna be when it's time to uh, put down the black glitter. Make sure I have it all right here. knock it off real good we'll let it sit for just a minute and then we'll take a piece of parchment paper and lay all that glitter flat okay so for this part i'm going to shut it off I want to be sure that when I'm pressing this down, I'm not mixing that gold in with the yellow and white. I'm just laying it all flat. So what I'll do is I have my piece of parchment paper and I'm just gonna wrap it around and hold it in place. Let me roll that over. And I'm just laying the glitter down. If you are using a um, really fine glitters, then you don't really have to do this part, but with some of the bigger flakes that I have in here, I want to make sure that I don't have any issues with some chunky bits, well not chunky, but the medium bits that I have in here really sticking up and giving me an issue when it's time to put down epoxy. It'll kind of allow for um, less steps. This next part, we're going to take a coarse uh, paintbrush. I had this, it almost feels like a chip brush at the bottom. It's pretty um, hard bristles. And what we're doing is we're just dusting off some of that glitter that fell inside of these black spots. If you feel a little more comfortable waiting for your epoxy to sit a little longer, then go ahead and do that. That way you make sure you're not moving some of that epoxy onto those black spots. Let me see if I can grab another paintbrush too. I have a few different ones here and sometimes I feel like no matter what, I can use the same method a hundred times and a different paintbrush will give me um, a little less trouble than others. Okay, so all I'm really doing is taking this. Um, this paintbrush is one, I don't know, I don't remember what I was doing one time, but I wanted a, um, a stubby end, so I cut off all the bristles on that. So that's what I'm using right here. It's just a paintbrush that I chopped off the end. So I'm not getting really into detail with how these uh, spots are. I'm mainly just wiping away a bit so that I can see where those lines are. See if you see this big one. None of that stuck right here because it came out super clean with using speed dry, letting that set up for a minute. So I can just wipe this away. This is where that kind of step with the black spray paint um, it does add a lot more work onto, onto this, but it's a lot easier for me. It's a lot easier to just drop Mod Podge and black glitter right there 
than to try to freehand these spots. Um, some designs I can do pretty good. I feel like I can do really good. Um, painting leopard spots by hand is not one of them. <laughs> That's not something I could do real good. Haven't figured that out yet. Some of you guys are amazing. Um, I just happen to not be. All right, so we'll continue to dust this off. I'm really gonna let this spin for a minute because what I'll do after this spins a little longer is I'll go through one more time and just get any other pieces that I really missed. I'll take it outside. I will spray it with clear um, spray paint, just two times uh, Rust-Oleum clear sealer. I'm going to do a matte sealer for that. Um, whenever you spray paint this glitter with the matte sealer, when we drop the black, it's gonna be easier to dust it off if it's on a matte surface. If it's on a gloss spray paint, it's gonna to wanna to stick a little and you can still wipe it off. It's just um, not as easy if we use matte. So we're gonna let this go for a little bit and then take it outside and spray it. Okay, so please don't kill me. I started this and realized um, I didn't start the video. So what I did is I have my favorite black paint. It's um, black 3.0. It is insanely black, guys. It's like velvet black. Um, I have a, a fun video I'm doing on with this paint, um, and I'm pretty excited. So that will be out at some point. But what I'm doing is I'm going through, and a few of the spots that were by the white that may have gotten covered up just a little or I didn't put the um the these little dots out more I'm just filling those in that way my black has a um a good base to go on while you're at this part if you have any glitter um you know that's too much of that color right there you can always cover that over with black but it's not even a big deal because the black glitter is going to be really good to cover that um and I think those are pretty much the only two on that other side that I had a problem with um, not really a problem. I just didn't put my spot um, on the black. So that's it. Have those touched up. Make sure that dry is all the way. I did take this outside just a minute ago and I sprayed clear matte spray paint on it. It's just Rust-Oleum two times um, matte, ultra matte or something, clear spray paint. I'll have that listed in the description also. And I just went ahead and sprayed this really good. Make sure it's completely dry. If that spray paint isn't dry for this next step, that when you go to drop your black glitter, it's gonna get stuck in there. So make sure this is dry. This is really, really good and dry. We'll let it go for a little longer and then we'll come in with that black. The black we're using is Desire Junior from Mr. Nola's Glitter. Okay, so how we're doing this part is we're just gonna put it on with Mod Podge. I have Desire Junior and I'm putting a little bit into this uh, paper cup that I have. I've used these um, these shakers for everything. And so my little spout right here is a little flappy that it doesn't quite stay up on its own. So I poured it into a cup that I'll have a little bit more control when I go to put it in these spots. And then we're gonna have our Mod Podge and we will, um, we'll just start putting this on. I put a little on the back of a cup just for the point of making it a little easier to work with and we'll just get this done. This is the part where I said that if you did, if you decided to not do this part in glitter and you just did with vinyl, um, instead of these spots right here, this whole section would be um, gold. You would be putting on that layer of epoxy, that first layer of epoxy right now, which would be so great to do. But like I said, <laughs> I decided to post a photo of glitter and not that I think that was a horrible mistake because it came out really, really good and I love it. But um, I think that if I wanted, was going to make a ton of these, which it looks like might be the case, I would definitely switch to just doing vinyl. Mod Podge tends to dry fairly quick. So get a good healthy layer on there and then drop your glitter. If you wait too long, it'll dry up on you. There's a chance I'll have to go in with two coats of this, which is fine. We'll get the first one on, let it sit for a bit, and then come in with the second. So this is where you just 
little more of a direct half. All right, this is gonna be it, one spot at a time. just a feathered paintbrush and we're going through and knocking away any loose black glitter. I want to make sure this is super clean because our next step is to take it outside with some matte clear spray paint and spray this so that everything is in place. Then we'll go on with a second coat. The reason I'm going to seal this before I do that second coat is that if any little pieces of that black glitter might still be just a little loose um, or maybe the glue hasn't completely set if i go to spray paint and i think i've waited enough time this should be good but still some pieces if it didn't have enough glue under it will be a little loose and i don't want to have all those pieces picked up when i'm putting on this next layer of black glitter because this will need a second coat i always do two coats when i'm using black glitter just because uh, it doesn't always show super, super good with one coat. I would really like for it to have depth and I'm gonna make sure it gets on there. So we're just carefully wiping in between some of those spots to get all that black to go away. This part is super important just to make sure that when you go to seal it, you don't have black glitter in between all of these little crevices of glitter and it doesn't of the gold glitter and it doesn't look messy. And full disclosure guys, I'm working on a few of these right now and I had to stop uh, working overnight. And when I came back in the morning, I had to reset everything up and I completely forgot which one of these cups I filmed yesterday, but they are all identical. So we're right where we left off. So if some of the spots look like it might be in a different place, just, just so you know. All right, so all of that is wiped off. We're gonna take it outside and hit it with some clear matte spray paint. So normally I don't show you this part, but I figured I would give you an idea of how, exactly how much spray paint we have to use. It's not a lot. We're just doing a few good, healthy coats of it to make sure that stays in place. And that's about it. That's all we need, just to make sure it doesn't wanna move on us. That layer of spray paint we just did is dry. You wanna make sure that's completely dry. Um, if it isn't, you have the risk of having this black that we're gonna drop down get stuck to that spray paint, and then you'll just dirty up all the work you just did trying to clean it off. So we're gonna take the black and go through and do a full second coat. I don't quite remember if I said it in the earlier part of the video, cause that was yesterday. So just in case I didn't, and I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself and I did say it, but we use matte spray paint for that because the glitter won't want to stick to it like it will want to do when it's dry, like it will want to do on gloss. For some reason, every once in a while, if you spray paint, with gloss, even if it's dry, the spray paint, um, I'm sorry, the glitter that you drop won't be quite as loose on it. 
so we use matte just in case. Just easier to make it wipe off. So we're gonna go through and just make sure we get every little spot and go really good on this second coat. This will be the last one you need of this. I also forgot to say earlier on that with some of these black spots, if they weren't quite dark enough in that first application of black glitter, you can add just a little bit of dye to that black to the black Mod Podge, and that will help with your coverage. I would use that part. Um, I would use that process if I wouldn't have a bl bottom black surface. But since we did that layer of black spray paint, it gave that base that we needed, so I didn't have to worry about um, putting paint in my my podge. You can kind of see how everything's dry enough because when we're putting on this Mod Podge, we don't have any black glitter coming up off these spots. Let this sit for a minute and then we'll go back and do just like we did before with tapping off the glitter and really wiping between some of those spots and making sure that it's all clean in between all the dots and little um little spots of it i don't want to wipe it right now because i don't want to risk dragging any of that wet mod podge over the glitter so uh, we'll let this hang out for a bit first I have all of the black glitter cleaned off, all the loose glitter cleaned off. I sealed it uh, probably two or three times with clear Rust-Oleum two times clear spray paint. It doesn't matter for that step if it's matte or gloss. You just want to make sure that you grab white, um, not white, sorry. You just want to make sure you grab that clear spray paint and get it on there. Um, last thing you want to do is grab a color and put it over top that glitter. So now we're just going with this first layer of epoxy. It doesn't have to be a super thick layer. Just make sure you get a clean one on there. Our plan is to just have this part done in one layer that way we can go right with the stitches and then we'll need another layer of epoxy before we can continue on with paint. So the um, better of a layer we can get on here, uh, that doesn't make sense. More decent, <laughs> I don't know guys. Uh, of a layer that we can get on here the better it will be and hopefully use less epoxy so it doesn't end up being a bulky cup because we will have still maybe three more layers of epoxy to, uh, to go before this is all the way done so i have that on it spread out pretty good i have my torch i'm using speed dry epoxy the great thing about this is that it will set depend and this definitely depends on your location and humidity and um, timing and everything else um, but for me, it sets up to where I can um, touch it. I can at least touch it in two hours. I wouldn't sand it for about three hours though, um, maybe three and a half hours just in case. But like I said, I don't wanna do that at this point. I wanna be able to go straight on with my, uh, with my stitches, with my baseball stitches over this. So we have that there. We don't have any bubbles that we can see. I'm gonna let this spin for just a few minutes, go through and torch it one more time. The really the other really good thing about this epoxy is that with the off-gassing, the bubbles pretty much pop while they're sitting in the cup. Um, by the time they transfer onto your tumbler and you work it through with your hand and kind of work through 
spreading it out. Uh, they, they release themselves, which I absolutely love. So I get minimal bubbles with this stuff. So torch it one more time, make sure that's set up real nice. And then we will uh, be back in a few hours. I'm gonna trim off the bottom of my tumbler. I don't do the bottoms anymore. Um, I just like the way they come out and it kind of cuts down the risk of it dropping and cracking on the bottom. So I have this cup edging tool from Wicked Shimmer and I have it down to the lowest setting. The black piece is in there and I have a paring knife that I just wedged between the blade and that bottom uh, black brace. The reason why I have that knife is in there is that I find that whenever I do this step going against epoxy, that blade can get a bit wobbly and this really helps with the stability. So what I'm doing is I'm just rolling it around in a circle. I'll try to put it this way so you can see. When it starts having that sound right there is when you cut through the epoxy. Make sure it's all the way around. And then we'll take our knife and trim it off the bottom. For the most part, it just pops up. It also depends on how long that's been sitting. And I usually try to get this done after one coat. I did jump on and put a second coat on top um, of that last one that I filmed. I didn't film that second coat. I felt like when I went to go check it to see if we were ready to put some spray paint, there was a few pieces of glitter I could feel that were rough and I didn't want to take the chance of having any really bits of rough glitter on there and then having it gets the spray paint gets stuck in between that so i took the extra minute and i did a second coat so this is after two coats if i were to trim this off after the first coat it's going to be a lot easier because it's a bit thinner but it still comes off pretty good all right so i'm making sure it's off i just realized i have my lights off right here that's why it's so dark I'm gonna pop off this bottom piece. I have one inch round stickers that I get from Sticker Mule with my logo on it that I put in right here and then I use my heat gun to really press it in place. And I put UV epoxy and I set it out in the sun. Um, if I have a batch mixed up in cups that are ready to go with regular epoxy, you can use that. Uh, but for the most part, I do this the day before, like the day I'm ready to mail them out. So I'll set them real quick. So now I'm just going through and cleaning up any paint that's along that rim. My magic eraser it comes off a lot better with those things. Magic eraser and acetone will clean anything, guys. If you get paint on the inside of your cup and it really won't come off, get like just a little piece of magic eraser, and it doesn't have to be the expensive brand. You could get just a dollar store type. Those work great too. You get that, and it'll get the paint right off. So besides a sticker, this is what the bottom of my tumbler would pretty much look like when I hand it over to a customer. As I do these next coats of epoxy, I'm going to take it when I get to the end, I'm really going to drag it towards the bottom of the cup more. And then I'll take rubbing alcohol and I'll just clean up the bottom just on the outside bottom of it without touching this part. And that reestablish that seal around the end of the epoxy. So you don't have any issues with it being compromised. All right, we're gonna get our stitches done next. All right, so I did one side of this tumbler and I'm gonna show you um, how it works out for this and how I, how I do this part. So I have my baseball tape. Um, it's just baseball stitches that I got off Amazon. It's packing tape. 
Um, it's super easy to find on there. It is slightly difficult to work with, guys. I'm going to be completely honest. But I absolutely love the way this tape looks. Um, it has like this, it's super detailed. And even around the stitching, it has like a little shadow around it. And it really almost has like this 3D stitches look that I really prefer over vinyl. So this is what I use. And I just fight with it. So what I'm doing is I have a piece of parchment paper. I get my parchment paper from Sam's. So I'm not sure if the width of parchment paper, you know, in the big Sam's bucket is different than the one that just such a regular grocery store. But what I do is I lay a piece of tape down that is the same width as the parchment paper. And I found that it fits every tumbler um, really good and I end up with little strips left over that I can save as kind of patch pieces. Now what I'm doing for here is I'm have it down part paper, parking paper, I smush it down really good and then we trim it out. And I'm just taking my silly clean these real quick. You'll end up getting a little um, of the glue from the tape built up on your scissors and that will make it a little more difficult to cut. So we'll take a second and make sure there's nothing sticky on here. This is just an alcohol wipe. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, start trimming this out. I'm not going in harsh Vs whenever I trim this. You know, I'm not going like pokey in and out. I'm more of going in a U shape. I find that um, if you do this U shape, it the tape holds together better than if you were to cut a harsh V because there isn't like that strong point from the tape to rip at, if I can explain that right. Like it isn't, you know, just a harsh angle that can pull away. Also with this, depending on the curve of the cup is how far you want to trim in this tape. This angle that I'm working on, it's um, kind of wrapped it around more than I probably should have. Uh, it looks good, but it's going to be a little more tricky to get this tape laid down you know, to really fit where I want those spots to be. You know, to curve around the edges and the look that I want. So this is it. We're just gonna go through and trim this out. The other thing that I need to tell you guys real quick before I start for fast forwarding this for you guys is for this part with the tape, this is going on a glossy, unsanded surface. If you did have to sand it, then you're gonna have to hit it with a clear gloss spray paint or a gloss sealer. That way the edges of the tape will blend in with the cup. If you put this tape over a mat, <clears throat> sorry guys, if you put this tape over a matte surface, then you're gonna have a cloudy look to the edges of your tape. You'll be able to see where that line is. With this clear packing tape, it blends right in with epoxy. You can't tell at all. Like it really just looks like the stitches are floating. So either get this on preferably a fresh, um, you know, coat of epoxy, meaning unsanded, or a spray painted surface. All right, one side down, and we're gonna do the other. Take off that bottom piece because I don't want to fight cutting around it. I always trim out this tape because it gives me a little more flex when I'm putting it down on the cup. If it's just that straight edges, it's super hard to make it curve with the cup. And this really gives you a lot more give.
All right, that part's done. So what I do is I have the stitches running down this way, so I'm gonna go have them running up the other way. Um, I like for things to look pretty close to the actual um, baseball in this situation. And whenever you see it, the stitches go in opposite directions, so that's how I'm gonna go ahead and run this. I'm gonna start from the bottom. And we'll just do a little at a time. And I'm going to start by pressing down the inside of the stitches. And then I can work on laying down the edges of it in a little bit. Turn in a little. This is where if you lay down this bottom part first, you can uh, move these, the ends of the stitches and kind of curve them the way you want. All right, so right along that line. Cut that off and then we'll work on flattening everything out. I'm going to start at the pieces that I know went on good and just lay them into place. Just be careful I don't rip it right here. lay it down. I'm going to lay down this crease and then we're going to cut out the piece that folded over right there. And then if you can see, there's a little spot right here that lifts up. I'm gonna slice through it. Then just encourage it to lay over each other. Flatten it down and cut out any pieces that looks like um, it just didn't go as flat as you'd like it. You definitely don't want epoxy getting between the tape and the um, and that other layer of epoxy, it's a bit of a pain to sand down. And then we'll go here. I'm gonna lift this piece up and just try to reposition it a little. And cut that off. This tape really is, um, really isn't the easiest thing to work with, but when it goes on, it looks so cool. Like it really does, it adds to it. It's so great, it just adds to it. So we have this, we're gonna clean up whatever that mess is, or a piece of tape. All right, so check it for pieces of tape, and then we're gonna go ahead and get another layer of epoxy on. We're going on with a super, super thin layer of speed dry epoxy. I have these stitches trimmed out to where the tape ends just before the end of the glitter. That way I'm able to wrap this epoxy over the edges and have it give a nice clean coat. The reason why I'm doing this layer of epoxy before I do the paint is that I don't, um, there's gonna be a bit of cleanup with the spray paint that we're gonna use. And I wanna make sure that 
I don't have any paint caught between the edges of the stitches, of the tape from the stitches. I want it to have a nice, clean, clean look. And this will let me kind of pull that off without having to worry about digging in and getting spray paint out of, you know, the edge of the tape. So we're gonna smooth this on. Like I said, it's just a thin coat of Speed Dry. This will set up within a few hours and then we'll be able to go right on with spray paint. Take your torch, pop any bubbles. And at this point, you wanna make sure the end where we trimmed off the bottom earlier, that is, um, we're starting to reestablish that seal. So take your epoxy and kind of push it into that little space. All right, and then you can just take your hand at this point, wipe off the extra. And I know I've said it a lot of times, I use baby wipes for the cleanup. So I'm taking my baby wipe and I'm just gonna run it along the outside just to help keep it clean and um, not have any big bumps of epoxy that went towards the bottom. So that's it, we're gonna let this spin for a little bit and then we'll come back and, uh, and hit it with spray paint. This layer of epoxy has been drying for a while and now we're gonna get our paint on here. We know that for the decal, we want it to be some position between the stitches and this is gonna be about the area of where the spray paint's going to land. So we're gonna go ahead and start with just an easy coat. And we can wipe away whatever we don't want. So it's okay if you make this part a little bigger than you think you need. We have that on. And there's two ways you can do this next part. I like to have little spots in between, um, you know, on the paint so it almost has like a 3D look to it. If you have a spray paint can that kind of is spitting out um, flakes of paint, then you can use that, like chunks of the white, then use that. If not, you could just take white paint, like white acrylic paint, and flick it at the cup. Um, both of them will create this look. So what I'm doing, and this can is just about dead, um, which is why it's pretty good for this. Last time I used it, it was just dropping paint everywhere, which is perfect for this stuff. So I'm just barely pressing it and I'm letting it just spit paint out. The wind is kind of taking it from me. Letting it come out like this will ruin the paint, will ruin the paint that's left in the can. So I only say do this if you have a paint that's messing up. If your paint is still working fine, then, um, then just use acrylic paint and flick it at the cup. If not, you're kind of just wasting a whole, um, a whole can of spray paint. But some of these bigger chunks that are falling, I want these to stay there because I want that paint splatter look towards the edges. I'm not worried about any of the pieces that fell out bigger like that because I can go through and wipe that off with um, acetone. So I'm just gonna keep putting it on there until I get a good texture. And then we can go through, we're gonna let that sit and then I'll show you how to wipe that up with just um, rubbing alcohol so you don't ruin all the paint that we just did. We have our messy bun decal cut. The size that we did is, the height is 5.4 and the width is 3.3. .3. I found the messy bun, um, you know, the hair and the sunglasses on Etsy, but I couldn't quite find everything else exactly how I wanted. So I used my slice tool and I, um, I got the letters. I think the font for this is that JP Sporty and I'll have to pull up the other ones, but I just kind of put it all together with just slicing pieces that I want. Then I built it off of the cup. 
So we're gonna go ahead and transfer it onto here. I haven't started cleaning it up because I want to clean up around where my design's gonna be. I want that all to flow. Um, so we'll clean it and then just be careful about where we want it to land. So we're gonna look at it first and determine where it's gonna be as far as where the stitches are. And you can kind of see, it'll come off just the stitches on each side, so it'll be perfect. We'll put that down first, and then we'll clean up around it and just be careful not to touch the black um, of the decal. Have a few pieces of transfer tape that I'm using to get the decal over. And in my head, I'm trying to work out how I'm gonna show you guys cleaning this up without looking at it straight on. I built this, usually I build all of my decals on the cup. I find I get a lot less bubbles whenever I build layers onto, um, you know, when it's on the tumbler. But for this one, everything's spaced out and it fits in the little hole. So I built it off the cup just because I know that with the stitches, I had to trim them down. And I would rather do that off of the cup. That way, you know, if I cut too deep, I'm not messing up any of the paint right there. Get this off the paper. And then we're gonna see where we need it to line up. I'm really hoping I can do this and not mess it up as it's laying down. I might have to, I have to stand it up and do it this way. I'm so sorry. All right, so I want it in between both of the stitches. Land it right about in the middle, make sure it's straight. The writing of the word mom is what I'm looking at whenever I put this on. I wanna make sure it makes a straight line going across right there. So I'm gonna really get this on here. I'll let this paint sit and dry for a bit before I came through to put the decal on. Make sure it's on there really good. And I'm pulling close to the cup just to make sure nothing gets lifted off. Okay, so that's all on. And now we're gonna start cleaning it up. Let me see if I can get, I have a little piece of red. Okay. So now to clean everything up, I have my dry baby wipes, like I was saying a few times before, just in a tissue box. I throw them in the dryer. They hold together with alcohol and acetone um, a lot better than anything else I've ever tried to use. You just throw them right in the dryer and it works perfect. And then it also holds the alcohol a lot longer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm only using alcohol on this rag right now and I'm just making circular motions and I'm trying to pull the paint back. I wanna get an idea of where I want the outline for all this to be. And since we went through and we did, you know, just those rough squirts of paint on here, I'm able to wipe away the paint, the thinner layers of paint and still leave, you know, some of those spots that I wanted. If you were to take acetone right now and go at this and wipe it off, you'd be wiping away a lot of paint. And I don't really wanna to commit to losing a lot of paint right now. I just wanna see what I can clean up and refine as far as getting these um, these little dots to still have that accent around the end. You can see it really start to clean up. It's kind of tough, man, because you put all that work into the leopard print just to have most of it covered up <laughs> by paint. I really do want to try this design with decals. Like I said, man, it will cut half the time, and I still think it'll be really, pr really pretty, really clean and pretty. Just haven't quite had the time yet. 
all the extra paint that went toward the sides, we're gonna clean that up. We're just still gonna work on making sure our decal, the layout is how we want with the accent of the paint around it. I mean, you can already see how well this, um, this baby wipe is holding together. If this was a rag, you know, just a napkin, it would be torn up by now. And it's not even drying out on me. I just know that it's gonna work better with a good bit of alcohol on here. It's kind of why I keep wetting it. All right, so you can see it kind of starting to take shape around there. And we'll go towards this other side. Turn it upside down for you guys. And I'm not pushing down hard at all. I'm just doing circular motions to help wipe in between those dots. So all we're gonna do is keep pulling this paint back till it gets to where we want. This is that big old spot that fell in the cup. Just take that out. I don't wanna do, I almost reached for the acetone just now. I was like, you know what? It's on the rag that I'm still using. Let me just wait. The only thing I'm really being careful for right now is to not get this paint wiped into the decal. You don't want this white paint to go on that black. If you weren't too sure about this step and you wanted to be a little more careful, then I've done this before and it's really worked. I've taken um, some clear contact paper and I put it on top of my decal just as a rough little idea of where to cut. And then I put that, I put just the, um, I, didn't put, I didn't put the decal on the cup. I put just the clear contact paper on the cup in the position that my decal would be. That way, you know, if I did go a little more aggressive and I did bump into it, it wasn't that big of a deal. I didn't mess it up. And then I was able to take it off and know exactly where that decal had to be set because the paint was kind of wiped in the shape of the, um, of the piece that I put down. Okay, so keep wiping this around. Keep turning my rag to find a clean part, dip it in and go again. I feel like for this part, this is just a preference as far as how much of the paint you want removed. You obviously don't want to cover up the entire leopard area, but however much you decide to take off is really up to you. Still keep wiping them around and take off what I don't want. All right, so when I look at it to the front, it goes out too much right here. Like I don't want it to look like it's ears. I want to pull that in more. So I'm going to shape it a bit more to where this is. I want to be able to see leopard when you're looking at the front of the cup. So I'm going to make sure I pull this back a bit. That rag isn't horrible, but I'm gonna switch this because I know I have a lot of paint on it and I've switched directions a few times. So this is wiping up real nice. 
If you wanted to do a bit more of these spots, then like I said before, all you have to do is just take some acrylic paint, put it on a paintbrush or even on your finger, and just flick it at the cup. These, oh, I keep wanting to reach for that acetone and I'm not there yet. <laughs> Some of these pieces are way too far off where the paint went and I don't want them that far back because I want to be able to see a really clean look to this outside of it. So we're gonna make sure we have that pulled away. I don't mind if some of these spots go off it to the side right here, but I don't want it to fall back definitely not from where I've cleaned up at that part. So towards the end, we'll get the acetone and really make sure that's super, super clean. And then these, I want these spots, so I'm just gonna clean in between some of them. The longer you let that paint sit on there, the more set it will be. So if you wanted to wait, you know, a little longer, you definitely can. Let me keep going around, and clean this up. And then this was that other piece I kind of poked out that I didn't like. So I'm going to make sure I take that off. I'm going to take it off, but I want it to stay where I can see some of those dots through there. I'm not sure if you can see that from your angle. I'm gonna see if I can just wipe within that a little. Okay, and then from where I wipe, there's almost a big line of dots on this side. So I'm gonna go with the acetone and clean that up. Want to really, really make sure there's no overspray behind the back of it. And this is where if we were to leave these, um, the stitches and not do that layer of epoxy, We'd be fighting with it right now. We'd be fighting with getting this paint from in between those grooves. Um, it's that whole extra step that, you know, delays it being done, but it makes for a much cleaner look. So we take the time to do it. All right, I'm gonna wipe away any spots that don't make sense. Make sure nothing looks like it's coming at me in a straight line. And then once you get everything cleaned up, you'll see that some parts of the cup may be a little streaky. So just take your alcohol and go back to that and that will really help clean it up that last little bit without taking off more paint. You'll be able to get into some of these spots where it looks a little cloudy and wipe it off without you know, getting more on there. So when we're wiping this time, we're gonna pull everything into the design. Um, like the paint that we're wiping off, we're gonna pull it back down into it. That way, if it does get streaky, it's, you know, within the paint area and it'll blend in once the epoxy hits and we're not extending the streaks back on this way. Just keep making sure that you're turning your rag over that way, you're, if, it does, if it is full of paint, you're not kind of bringing it along that way again. All right, I'm gonna look at it one more time. Make sure it's where I want it to be towards the front. There's one piece right here where it goes out too far. I'm gonna pull this in a little. acetone takes it off super super quick so just be careful once you dip it in there I'm just kind of tapping it instead of like really committing to wiping it down all the way I'm just tapping it down a little more that way I can encourage a little at a time and not really have a big chunk taken off all right so I think that's it
have it painted right to the middle. Everything's around it. Take one last swipe with acetone and make sure there's no overspray towards the back of the cup. And then this is pretty much it, guys. We're going to go through, put another coat of epoxy on this. And then after that coat is cure, I'm going to take uh, my sanding sponge, a 60 grit sanding sponge, go around the bottom, make sure all that's flat, the top, um, make sure there's a nice line established for my epoxy to kind of grip back onto. That way um, that seal isn't towards the inside of the cup. It's right, you know, along that outside part and it's gonna hold tight. And, um, and then that's gonna be it. So epoxy, sand if needed, and then the final layer of epoxy and that would, that'll be the end of it. So we'll get this over there and, uh, and get that part done. This is the first of the final layers of epoxy and I'm saying first because I'm definitely gonna end up pulling it to sand my tops and bottoms and make sure it's super smooth. But that will be ready to go in just a few hours. I'm using Speed Dry again. I absolutely love this stuff. The bubbles definitely work them, their ways out on their own. You know, no fighting with it. Sets up quick, I'm able to sand it and then get to my final coat. I had someone ask about the bottom of my cups. So I trim off the bottom of the tumblers. Um, I showed that earlier in the video with my cup edging tool. And what I do after that, just to make sure that the seam, you know, that seal is reestablished, is that I take my epoxy. Let me get my heat gun real quick. Make sure it's all smoothed out real quick. And I believe I showed this earlier, but just to make sure you guys, um, just in case I didn't make sure you guys are aware, I pull it down and then I just make sure the bottom of it has a good coat on it. So I'll go around a few times and make sure that I'm pushing that epoxy back into the crease where I trimmed it out of the first time. Uh, since I went through and I cleaned it all up, I won't have any issues with paint or anything sitting right there. It's just a nice clean coat. Make sure all my bubbles are popped. Really focusing on that, on those black areas. You'll be able to see those bubbles if there are any inside those black areas a lot quicker than you will the white. So go through real good, make sure it's popped. Gonna wipe that bottom off. And that's it. That's it for this. I have, let me grab some alcohol real quick. For that bottom to make sure it stays super clean, take some alcohol. And then just touch up the bottom. And all you're doing for that is after you wipe it through, you're just making sure that it has um, just a clean look to the bottom. You can hit it with the heat gun or a torch to make sure that epoxy is all laying flat. And that's it. That's the end. Um, oh, I see one piece I need to fix. Let's see if you guys saw it. On the glasses, I noticed a red flake of my stitches that didn't come off. Right here. There we go. All right, now that's it. Torch that again, put it back in place. And there we go. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions. You know that I'm here to help answer anything. And um, I'll try to get one done with the spots where they're not glitter. Uh, like I said, it would be a much quicker process. Just, um, I put this out there, so this is what I'm doing now. <laughs> so, uh, please like and subscribe. Like I said, I'm here if you have any questions, and I hope to hear from you guys soon.